So this is my mural. It's, uh, it was done 2020, and it ran into 2021. And this has to do with uh, the COVID-19. I gave back. I didn't charge none of this. This was all free, and I gave it back to the community. You know that I freestyled this. Then I started one wall that has to do with the thank you to all the essential workers. I died, I did that. Then I did all the signs, very simple, placards, so that way the kids can read it or people can read it. That these, are the th these words that we're gonna remember for the rest of our life. Stand back six feet, wash your hands, uh, avoid crowded places. These are, we're gonna remember this for the rest of our life. So I seen the neighborhood in shambles. I seen the neighborhood deteriorate. I saw the neighborhood shine. I seen the neighborhood take shape. Then it fell apart again and it came back. It's just like a boxer with 12 rounds. I forgot my water. I remember my father going out and buying me a Grumbacker oil paint set in a suitcase. That was my first that you can open up and it will convert into a tripod and you can go out in the, on the streets of the park and you can paint. So then that's when I started dabbling with painting. It was in junior high school. I met this teacher and the teacher said that I had talent so she put me what they call a uh, a art group an art organization where we do billboards in the school we'll take the uh, decorate the hallways for Thanksgiving we will we will um, for graduation and I was part of that committee and um, then uh, she got me involved I remember in a in a art contest with with a Spanish network paper called Diario de la Prensa and I won first prize through Dewey the teacher, Ms. Boozer, uh, I told her that I would like to go to the art school, but I'm, my parents didn't have money to put the portfolio, to buy a portfolio, to make the presentation. So one day she surprised me, and out of her own money, out of her pocket, she set up my portfolio. And she showed me, I think there was like 20 different works inside it, from watercolor, drawing, pastels, all kinds of stuff. And she put this portfolio together. Now, mind you, the school that I was going to go interview was located somewhere in Lexington Avenue uh, by the 59th Street area. And um, it was called High School of Art Design. That was like me traveling to, to Spain or Paris, going to Lexington Avenue, watching these skyscrapers, these buildings. Watching these department stores that were decorated, and all this, I didn't know about this, this for these fashion and and, and the, the cars honking and the people. And when I went into the school, never in my life I was so school with elevators and escalators, a terrace. In the hallway, when I got to enter the bathroom of high school of art design. There was no more, I'm talking about no more real estate for a tag to be put on that wall. There was so much graffiti, they even took a lighter and, and tagged the ceilings. It was tagged. The only thing that I had done was the basins and the floor. They didn't have. But I, I said, what is this? And when I saw Tracy 168, Futura 2000, Shadow, Bomb One. And I started seeing all these names, and it happened to be that a lot of these people now has become a, 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 a trademark popular name in the graffiti world. You have to understand that this is this culture is almost 50 years ago. Now, what's going to happen in the year 2050 when we're not here no more? You know, this is why I took it into another way so I can make it into... Um, into art form. Now there was three things that you can do in 1975. The street, we didn't have tablets, no electronics, no computers. 
it was either school and it was school of hard knocks. Once you step outside to play with your kids, it was you run your own. So there was either the street gang, there was drugs, or graffiti. I chose graffiti. Graffiti was my outlet. My graffiti was my psychiatric sort of like loophole. When you go painting a graffiti, you think my father would give me $10 so I can go and purchase spray paint at a hardware store? No way. I mean, my father would check my nails, my nostrils. He would check my clothes, smell my clothes to see if I was I'm painting. If he found evidence, there was a complimentary beating. So I started being more careful. When we went to the hardware store, we had a lookout, and then we had the other people boosting the spray paint. And we would have to go to Pergamon store, or we would go to Woolworths, or we would go to Gray Shell stores. We would go to these, these stores that they carry spray paint and steal. Once we take the paint, now we have to go down, bring it into a bag or something, go to the platform, go to the end of the station, and jump into the tracks. Now you're trespassing. Once we jump into the tracks, and you go past the fence, now we're in a yard that belongs to the New York City Transit Authority. Now we're walking on third rails, we're walking, we don't know if they got dogs, we don't know if there's any workers, so we have to do what they call a uh, assessment. Usually we go around the, the yard, we go by the handbook court, in jo like John Dewey High School, right behind the handbook court in Coney Island Yard, and we do an assessment. We will see the black and whites, the black and whites with the New York City Transit Cops, back in there because they had three different divisions. They had transit, police, and um, projects, cops from the projects at that time. So they had three divisions in the 70s. See, I, I, I got caught two times, but I got caught both underage. So I got caught in a where I had a, the judge who put me community service. Community service is a place where you roll up on a four, four Saturdays on a weekend, on a month, you show up at 10 o'clock and there will be a police officer with a clipboard, with a manifest, with people's names that have to be there. And then the, we, they will give us a bucket, they will give us a brush, they will give us that, and guess what? We will have to scrub the, the graffiti off the trains, the inside, stuff like that. It's just like going to jail. Now you meet another criminal that's going to teach you that's so you will meet the other graffiti artists that were older than you, and as they will exchange phone numbers, and now we meet new friends. So, yeah, oh, I got a yard. Oh, I got a tunnel that nobody comes. And I started exploring, and that's how I got to meet the Bronx, the Queens, and all these graffiti artists throughout the metropolitan area. You know, a lot of people go into dioramas and they build models. I understand because maybe they don't know how, but then they they don't weather it. They put the building up. They don't put a crack window. They don't put a roof with debris. They make a diorama street clean. Like, New York City was never like that. So I, I sometimes I, I admire that work, but you have to add that, that there is no way you're going to make a military movie with guys clean cut and wearing army uniforms that have been pressed in the dry cleaner. No. Don't make a movie like that. You can't make a, a, a 1970 Times Square movie with pimps and this without them in it and no graffiti on the train. Then you, the essence of the, uh, uh, that, sometimes people go, they see movies over and over again. It's because of the detail, you know, when it's the detail. If you see a, a mafia movie, you see those guys look like those guys. The cars and the, and the way they dress. Not like the guy's clean cut and you know that he's just an, a, a villain. And that's what I'm trying to say. So that's where I do a lot of my, the materials that I use. You will, I go to the park, I make a field out of there, branches. 
leaves, rocks. You go to the beach, stones, little stones, you, I take it with a little fun, and I pick with that, I can prove one piece at a time, I can glue a whole wall, and I can make you a marble wall. That's you? That's me, yes. Remember I told you my brothers were in gangs? Mm -hmm. Are those your brothers? Yes, on 539. Is that your mom? No, that's the snitch of the block. <laughs> She's That's the one that used to perfect. snitch on all of us. Wow. Her name was Alta Gracia. This is the way I used to dress to go paint in the hood with the Eisenhower jacket and the bandana so for sweating. 